In recent years, the long tradition of America's own music, jazz, has experienced a resurgence in popularity. At the same time, a new generation has set out to follow in the footsteps of the greats of jazz. Joining us now is one of the most popular of these young lions, trumpeter Wynton Marsalis, who is also artistic director of jazz at Lincoln Center. Stanley Crouch, a jazz critic and commentator and author of Notes of a Hanging Judge. He's also writing a new biography of Charlie Parker. Also joining us, Marcus Roberts, an extraordinary pianist. I'm pleased to have each of you here. And uh, we sort of convened this to talk about jazz, the notion of, uh, and we, we don't have enough time to give it justice, but we'll give it a try. When I just say the word, Wynton, what, did, what, what define it for me, help me understand it? Well, I think that uh, jazz music is an important 20th century chronicle of American life set to rhythm and tune. And uh, it is, it's a, a, as Albert Murray would say, an extension, elaboration, and refinement on the blues idiom yeah. statement. But Mr. Crouch is the words. Yeah, well, I know he is, and I know the two of you have a long-standing relationship. Help us out, Stanley. Well, I mean, it's it's. Uh, well, I mean, it's a, it's a music in which a number of things have taken place that often don't get addressed. I mean, there's a there's the great improvising voice. Right. Then there's the person who organizes the music. You know, the composer, the band leader, and then there's the interaction between the audience and the and and the music itself. And the fact that, this, that, that a language, of, that, a, that an ensemble language, a collective language of music that's partially composed and partially improvised shows how powerfully people can be themselves and be a collective at the same time. And that's where the real force of jazz comes from. When you hear a, when you hear a, a, a band come together right. on a bandstand and really start to swing, where each person is, is himself and is, and is, and is uh, responding to everybody else at the same time, then that's where the thrill comes in. You know, because it, it shows that you can have people making collective decisions and avoid anarchy. And it's sometimes people say that the, the notion of the improvisation is sometimes misunderstood because it suggests that people are just freewheeling and that, that it's, it is less than anarchy, that it, in fact it is the only way that the improv improvisation could take place is because of the brilliance of the musicians. Oh, yeah, they have to be smart. Yeah. You know, I mean, Marcus, I'm sure, could say yeah, something like uh, that. It's like anything. It's, it's dictated by a very complex language. But like any language, I mean, if you have a 10-word vocabulary, you don't have much to say. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you said that right. If you have a broad vocabulary, yeah, then you write, right. you know. The more words you know, the more complex yeah. sentences you can write. And, and I think the other beauty of jazz music is that it deals purely with the democratic conception. You don't have to be a millionaire to swing, you know. Yeah. I mean, if you, if, if you know the vocabulary, if you're dedicated to it, you can use it to teach yourself about who you are in relation to people who are far greater than you. How did you become a jazz musician? Why, and why jazz rather than rock? Why jazz rather than classical music? Or does it have to be uh, one or the other for you? Well, I chose uh, jazz because I felt spiritually more connected with that experience, even though I, I love classical music. Uh, uh, but for me, just that, that sound of freedom and swing, just that, that sound of soul and blues and sophistication that I just never been able to get away from it. Yeah. You, you mentioned the link with blues. Um, direct? Well, yes, with the blues is a, a system of harmony. It's a, a, a body of, of melodies. It's a, a form. Uh, it allows you to organize your music. It, uh, blues is a very complex form. It's secular, it's spiritual, it, it has um, the, all of the building blocks of any great music can be found in the blues. It's like a great folk idiom yeah. that you can use to play with and transform uh, material. I, I always say that the blues uh, a lot of times is equated with the feeling or the folk element and jazz is, is uh, a, a higher element of refinement that makes the blues all so accurate. Mm -hmm. Is jazz essentially black music? Oh, well, jazz is essentially human music. So what that means is that anybody who has a, who has a, a sufficiently rich conception of human life and can, and can, and can express that through, through musical composition. But or more through great jazz artists, probably. Have been Negroes? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, that's because more of them played it. And why was that? Well, because they invented it. I mean, it was, 
I mean, if you, if you, you know what I mean? It's like saying, it's like, it's like saying, well, you know, why do, why, why do more, more Mexicans eat t tamales? They invented them. Yeah. You know, so I mean, that's what they grew up with in their house. Well, if it had been otherwise, <laughs> do you think that do, if it had been otherwise, you think it would have been more appreciated in America and would have had a higher, you know, would have would have had a more popular impact? Well, see, I think there's, see, I think there's a fallacy to that because. Because I, I thought you would. Well, well, first thing, see, Louis, uh, Louis Armstrong was, was very, very popular. I mean, he was as you, popular as you, you could be in the exactly. '30s. I mean, he was, a, and Duke Ellington was making three hundred fifty thousand dollars in nineteen thirty-five yeah. a year, which would be a number of millions now. So there were a lot of guys who were very successful. What has happened? Uh, what what has happened is that a number of cliches have been associated with the music, like the fact that you know these. Uh, people came off the plantation and they invented this great music and America rejected them. Right. I mean, point of fact, people like Bessie Smith, I mean, Bessie Smith sold so many recordings that what became Columbia Records was built on the, on the grand popularity of her recordings. Louis Armstrong was heard on the radio and all across the country, so was Duke Ellington, so was Earl Hines. I mean, uh, uh, Harry Sweets Edison was telling me about how the, the, the white people in Kansas City used to come to the black haberdasheries in Kansas City because they were the ones who set the style and everybody in Kansas City who wanted to look good went to go to the black neighborhood because they wanted to yeah. wear the kind of sh shoes and shirts and suits that they right. were wearing. Well, but, but even today the street influences fashion too. If you look at clothes, the street uh, influences a lot of fashion, does it not? Yeah, but not, but well, but but what we're talking about now is a certain kind of uh, decadence that we have to address at a, at greater length at another time. I'm sure uh, all we right. start talking about today's street. <laughs> see, the, see the, the street that Louis Armstrong and those people came out of was a street in which people became a, aristocrats. More sophisticated. Well, they were aristocrats of achievement. See, I mean, see, that's the great that's the great story of jazz. Is these guys became aristocrats. These great singers like uh, Billie Holiday, they became aristocrats through their achievement, not because they were related to somebody else, not because of what right. they had in the bank. I understand. You know, it's what they it could do. It was the do. quality of their excellence. Yeah. Yeah. And it, yeah. Let me move to him and to Marcus both. You guys are considered young lions. What does that mean? I don't know. You, Marcus, but you've heard it before. I don't. Have you heard it before? You, of course you have. I've heard it. I don't ascribe to too many terms because they really don't, uh, unless they're linked with concrete, cogent information, uh, they tend not to yeah. mean much. It's more of a marketing term, I think. I think the good thing about it is that it has uh, given a lot of the younger musicians an opportunity to come out in and swing. Yeah. So anything that does that, I mean, I'm not adverse to, but as far as associating myself with it, I don't yeah. think much about it. Well, I'm, I've been out here too long to be a young lion. I, <laughs> He's not a I young was lion. 19 <laughs> for about eight years, so He's I, an old lion. <laughs> 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 You are an aging lion there, but... Maybe I would have matured to, to a man or something, human. I get out the animal kingdom. I, I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. But you know, what I, what, what I wanted to say is that... that see, what did you want see, to say? I, I think that the most important thing about all of these young musicians who yeah. play jazz is right. that they are exhibiting absolute freedom from mass media hype. Right. See, there's nothing that tells a young musician to try to learn what Thelonious Monk was playing, what Charles Mingus was playing, the music of Duke Ellington. These care people, about it and learn it and... And they think for themselves. Right. See, yeah. they yeah. think for themselves. So they are modern day Thelonious Monk. Perhaps, but, they, but see, we don't even associate individual thought with young people in America anymore. We just, I mean, young people in America are silly putty controlled by mass marketing techniques. And when you have a, a, a growing body... This is the decadence you referred to well, earlier. But, but you have a growing body of young men and women who really want to play jazz. And that's something that they had to decide on their own. Do, is that true? I mean, how do you know that's, that's a, true? That's a very important thing. I, I know that it's true because I work with a lot of young people. And a lot of times when I'm giving clinics, a kid will ask me, what about re relating us? What about appealing right. to us? And I have to tell them, look, uh, adults don't appeal to children. <laughs> That's, that's something that has been created to market these albums to you all. You, and when you see a young musician who comes out of these cities like Houston and Kansas City, a lot of times they're the only ones in their city who wants to play jazz. Yeah. And the fact that they're willing to put themselves through this, the, the discipline and, and all of the, the years of s some early disappointment to pursue the beauty of this music yeah. lets you know that they're not thinking on some assembly but, but line conception. Mark, go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say, uh, in follow-up to Winton's point, uh, the reason jazz music is very, very sophisticated, it is because of a spiritual need uh, expressed by the American people uh, to generate an art form that would give them aesthetic solutions 
to the gigantic problems that you have facing adulthood throughout your life. Uh, this is what causes it to be available. I mean, you know, it's, it's not because of the marketing of these fake terms that, uh, that we <laughs> tend to toss about. And uh, what we have to realize is that as we grow older, we need the music of Duke Ellington, we need the music of Beethoven, the music of, 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 of Monk. Of, of Bach. Because but he, do you worry that we won't have it because of the proliferation of the kind of music no, we we'll have, have today? It. No, we'll oh, have no, it. We're going to have it. We'll have it because it's, it's, it's enduring. That's it's right. enduring. It, it faces the natural gravitation to anarchy very well. <laughs> Stanley, why are you smiling? Oh, I think he's absolutely right. I mean, so that's what I'm saying. I mean, th I mean, if you had some rappers on here, you wouldn't get this level of discourse. I mean, that's why, <laughs> that's why I know that we're going to win and they're going to lose. You mean, even though I heard somebody here the other day said rap is the new rock. Well, I mean, you know, I, I'm, I'm sure if you were around in the, in the, in the wake of the French, during the French Revolution and they were chopping people's heads <laughs> off every day, people would have said, I think this is the norm for French civilization. <laughs> <laughs> I wish we had a piano here so <laughs> you guys could play. Thank you, Marcus. Thank you very much. Good to see you. Right. Stanley. Always. Thank you very much, Joe. Thank you for joining us tonight. We'll be with us again tomorrow night for a look at the U.S. Open with tennis great Arthur Ashe. See you tomorrow night.